Right, so right here we've got Sega Saturn games. Uh, these are the European ones, these are the Japanese ones. European Saturn cases are awful. Long story short, they're like crappy DVD cases and they're just completely falling apart. You can kind of see it like there and here. The front cover is absolutely knackered, they don't close properly after a while. They're just cheap pieces of crap. Um, Japanese cases are a lot better, they're like CD Dior cases. This is Conkworks, game I love, even though nobody else cares about it. And here is Load Runner. Oh, give me a sec. Load Runner Legend Returns and Load Runner Extra. Load Runner Extra has the worst box art of all time, but I still absolutely love it. Fantastic games, absolute pain in the ass to play, <laughs> to be honest, but I love them. But yeah, side and collection, pretty standard sort of stuff. You got Panzer Dragoon. Let me zoom in a bit. Panzer Dragoon, Knights into Dreams, Sonic R. Typical sort of Saturn games. Um, Lo uh, Load Runner, no, Tomb Raider, which I believe originally was a Sega Saturn timed exclusive. Daytona USA bug. Pretty box standard collection. Yeah, that's the Saturn stuff. Here is the Dreamcast. Pretty small collection. Um, again, pretty box standard stuff. Shenmue, Choo Choo Rocket, Jet Set Radio, Sonic Adventure. My copy of Sonic Adventure is actually in the Dreamcast right now because I'm playing through these games. Um, I've got such a big backlog of games that it's kind of ridiculous. So I'm starting on just doing one console at a time and it just happens to be Dreamcast right now. Funny enough, the most rarest thing I own is on top of here. Dr. Noon's Extreme with Cheese. This is a game that back in the day there were two options to buy it. You could buy a digital copy or a digital slash physical. I went for the physical one because I thought why not. And I contacted the developer of the game, Mike Kamel some time ago and he says he estimates there have been between 1 and 2,000 of these physical copies in the entire world. So the most rarest thing I own by a, f by a landslide. Doesn't necessarily mean it's worth a lot, but it's worth it to me. Yeah, and here we get an absolute tiny, tiny selection of Master System games. Sonic 1 and 2. And I did used to have a mass, bigger Master System collection but I sold it and I really regret that. So I'm starting to hopefully build this one back up a bit, a little bit, but obviously things are a lot more expensive now. But here we've got a fairly sizable Mega Drive collection. And of course you've got Sonic 3 and Knuckles, how can you not have those? Got a Game Genie. This is so awful to do with one hand. Uh, Virtua Racing, which is in the most awful condition. I don't know why, if you look at the back, I don't know why, but it's got like a crack on it, like someone's like opened it and glued it back together. I don't know why, but the game still works. I don't know why someone would do that, and maybe something broken with it. But yeah, this was basically Sega's sort of, like, I think it was like Sega's answer to like Star Fox, and I'll tell you, Virtual Racing is a much more impressive game. If anything, just for the frame rate, it runs really smoothly, surprisingly. But I think the cartridge itself was more expensive than the other games, so I don't think that's why it didn't sell particularly well. And of course, 3D Balls, Battle of the Balls. I once saw a game shop which had two copies of this and I thought it was pretty shameful. I only bought this because of the name. And again, it's got a bit of a weird cartridge, I don't know why. I'm guessing it needs a little bit more juice, but don't put that out of the frame, you fucking idiot. But behind it, we've got some more box standard sort of Mega Drive games, you know, Earth and Gym, all that sort of stuff, Sonic 2, Sonic 1, Dynamite Heady, and even though I've got a copy of Rocket Knight, I haven't played it yet. I really need to. There's so many games on this shelf that I haven't played yet that I need to play. But I'll probably eventually get to it soon, hopefully. And here we got the biggest part of the collection, the PS1 stuff. Which, a lot of these are games I had as a kid. I got rid of some of them recently, like the crap ones. I got rid of like the Rugrats games for fucking obvious reasons, but... Right off the bat, you got like Spy of the Dragon. How can you not like that? Actually, I don't know if I like it because I haven't played it yet, but sadly. Um, got Croc, also got Theme Park World, Arcade Party Pack, of course you have to have Crush Bandicoot and Ape Escape and Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, they're sort of like classics. And we just like Metal Gear Solid, which I haven't played, or the Final Fantasy games. Um, I actually got these, um, put them down here, I got these for 99 pence each, luckily, a few years back. I got these from a charity shop here in the UK called PDSA, and what makes it even better is I put the stickers on because that was back when I volunteered there for a bit. Somebody donated a bunch of PS1 games and the ones at the top of the pile weren't particularly outstanding or anything and so I asked them what price do you want me to put on the sticker and they said just put 99p on it 
and so I started putting the stickers on and obviously near the bottom I found these three beauties. I also found Incredible Crisis. I still haven't played them yet, it's embarrassing. Obviously I've got like Rayman, got more classic games like more, the Chicken, Pandemonium and Tomb Raider. So I've got two versions of Tomb Raider. And these ones are in like DVD cases because PS1 games are quite brittle cases and I never looked at looked after them as a kid very much. So this is just a substitute. Obviously you get Crash Free and you can barely see the Sheepdog and Wolf. But yeah, and right next to it we've got the 64 games. I did not grow up with 64 so I don't have that sort of nostalgia for it. Uh, the only box 64 game I got was Lilac Wars, aka Star Fox 64. You go to the side now. Again, a lot of these 64 games I haven't played yet. I have played Tonic Trouble. Um, not a great game, to say the least. Very unfortunate. I have played Banjo Kazooie, that's a very good game, although I do think the last level isn't that good. It kind of ends on a bit of a crap note, if you ask me. I mean, um, the, the words level, click clock words, is that? I forgot, it's been a while. It says rental unit on it, so I'm assuming that somebody's pinched this from like Blockbuster years ago. But obviously, I didn't pinch it because I'm a good boy. But right at the front, we got um, jump cut. But right at the front, we got Pokemon Stadium 2, which has got like a heavier cartridge. And I don't have the first Pokemon Stadium, I only have this one because it's so shallow. But the only reason I bought this one is because you can transfer the stuff from the Gen 2 games, which I generally prefer, to be honest. If I can play as my Faligator, I'm happy. It was certainly worth paying 70 fucking quid for this cartridge just to do that. Yeah, this is the problem with 64 games, they've got no fucking spines on them. So I can't just like, go through them easily. It's really annoying. Again, not these games, yeah. A lot of these games I haven't played yet. Donkey Kong Racing, I need to play that. Donkey Kong 64, I kind of gave up on that game, it's not very good. Um, Golden Eye, that's a classic. Blast Corps, I need to play that. Buck Bumble has the best title screen music of all time. I'll play a little sample for you now. And of course, Super Mario 64. How could you not have a 64 without Super Mario 64? I have actually 100% of this game. And Perfect Dark has another game that I need to play down. Play down? Play at some point. Carefully put that down. Smash. And here we get to the Wii stuff. Again, nothing particularly outstanding. Um, Get out of the way, my cot way, damn it. Um, SNK Arcade Classics Volume 1. I'm not sure if it ever got Volume 2. I don't know, I don't particularly think this game sold that well. It's weird because they released it on the Wii, the PS2 and the PSP, but not like the 360 or the PS3, which just seems bizarre to me. But yeah, I mean, I really only bought this for... um. Uh, what, what was it? Where is it? Neo Turf Masters. So I need to play the other games in there pretty soon. Yeah, but most of the Wii games sort of bog standard stuff. Um, obviously, like uh, start from the bottom this time. Super Mario Galaxy, good game, a little bit overrated. Super Mario Galaxy Two, uh, Wario Land, that's a good game. Super Paper Mario, the game that gets worse the more you play it. I I did a hundred percent on that. Like getting all the cards and doing the recipes, it's not worth the time to be honest. It's, the more you play it, the less fun it gets. Obviously, got Warrior Wear. Uh, Beat the Beat Rhythm Paradise, probably my favourite Wii game actually. Although it looks like a cheap piece of crap. Yeah, they, for some reason they called it Beat the Beat Rhythm Paradise here in Europe. In America, I think it was just called Rhythm Paradise Wii. Yeah, this is a great game. This is the best game in the series. This is better than the 3DS one, if you ask me. The VDS one's got a lot of good stuff in it, but it brings back a lot of the crappy mini games. Like, I didn't. I, in no way did I ever want to play Fan Club or the Fog Hop again. Oh, whatever. Can't win them all, but this is a great game. Almost all the mini games in this one's are, in this one are good. Back you go. And I've got. I don't. I do have no more heroes, but again, I haven't played it yet. And here's the Wii U stuff. Nothing outstanding here, in the slightest, to be honest. The only thing that's of interest is this. The official soundtrack to Super Mario 3D World. I got this back on Club Nintendo back in the day, can you see that, hopefully? Before it closed down, and yeah, I can't imagine this being particularly common, to be honest. I can't imagine they made a huge amount of these. But I, in my infinite wisdom, managed to crack the case on the back which probably destroyed the value of this, if it had any value. 
And here we get the GameCube stuff. I put all the Nintendo stuff in one bit, which is nice. Let me just do that again in one place. Right off the bat, you got like Luigi's Mansion, which is okay. Uh, Wario World, which is okay. Game Boy Player. Game Boy Player Startup Disc. Probably the most valuable thing in this GameCube collection. Yeah. For some reason, it's in English, and I'm assuming that's French. Exclusive, sir. Yeah, and what's burp? And what's interesting, you can't really see it on the camera, but on the TV on the back, you can see it explicitly says Panasonic on it. And I wonder if they made some sort of weird deal, or they just didn't care. But you'd think they would blur that out or censor it. But whatever. Most valuable thing in the collection. Metroid Prime. I still haven't played that. Royal Wear, we'll get to that in a second. Um, Super Mario Sunshine. Again, like Super Paper Mario, is one of those games that the more you play it, the worse it gets. It's got a lot of like blatant filler in, you know, the blue coins. It's blatant filler. Super Monkey Ball. A game that I wish I could love, but I can't because I'm just really crap at it. Donkey Konga. I do have the, the bongos somewhere. Pikmin. I haven't played it. And Need for Speed. What did I pay for that? Need for Speed. I paid £1.50, apparently. That's not a bad price, for what I assume is a decent game. But I wanted to talk about WarioWare, for this reason. That's the worst box art I've ever seen, at least one of the worst. I mean, I put a picture of the American box art right here. Why is our box art so crap in comparison? Like, why have we got this, like, custard yellow bullshit? And what makes it more annoying, if I open it up? Disc is blue. So you can make the disc blue, but you can't make the box like that nice blue colour with all the characters on it. It just makes it look like a cheap piece of crap. And it just sticks out like a sword thumb. Maybe that was their intention, but I don't know. Nintendo of Europe being fucking stupid. Nintendo doesn't care about Europe. Fuck, they, they don't care about us in the slightest. But let's go down to the PS2 games. Oh, my knees. Um, nothing particularly outstanding here. I got rid of a lot of my PS2 games since a lot of them I didn't think I'd ever play. But the, we are actually probably one of the most valuable things in the collection right here. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I've seen Kex in the Kex in Bristol City Centre sell this, try and sell this about a month or so ago for about £85. I think the only reason why it has any sort of value is because I don't think they made a lot of copies of it, because it actually came out after the Chamber of Secrets. In fact, the Chamber of Secrets was on CD-ROM, but this is on DVD-ROM. So yeah, that's why it elicits quite a high price. And funny enough, the Kex here in Weymouth have two copies of it for £80 each. So why they've got two copies, that's beyond me. Very bizarre. I haven't played it because, to be honest, I'm a little bit apprehensive to touch something that might be valuable now. That's one of the reasons why I don't tend to buy really expensive games because I feel like I'm too nervous to actually play them because I'm worried I'm going to damage them. But things get even weirder with this thing that I found. Game Wizard. For Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It's a cheat device for this game. But I was confused at first because I bought this and it says here for PlayStation. And I thought PlayStation 1. But you've opened up the desk. Give me a second, it's gonna be a fucking nightmare to do with one hand. It says on the desk PlayStation 2. So either I've got the wrong box and the wrong desk, or this is just a misprint on the front or mistake. So yeah, they made a, potentially they made a cheat device for a game that didn't sell very well. This is the most bizarre thing I've seen in a while, but yeah, it's a thing, and I like things. A lot of Crash Bandicoot games, Crash Mind Over Mutant, uh, Super Monkey Ball Adventure, Canis Canum Edit, which is called Bully Outside of Europe, Escape from Monkey Island. I don't know why they put that on the PS2, but they did. Tide of Tasmanian Tiger, that's a game that I keep meaning to play. Crash of the Titans, I think is a very... I'm not I was about to say underrated, my god, no, that's the wrong word. A very overly hated game, I don't think it deserves a lot of the hate. Sonic Hero, that deserves a lot more fucking hate, that game sucks. Um, Crash Tag Team Racing, I did a let's play that game, that's a decent game. Ape Escape 2, I keep meaning to play that. And... Oh, I, I, I can do... Oh, don't do Sideways, you idiot. Um, Virtue Tennis 2, Kui Kui Mix, weird game, Crash to Insanity, this is a notable game because this is the first PS2 game I ever owned. That's the end of what I've got to say. But yeah, this is 
Crash Bandicoot the Rather Cortex, the most mediocre game ever made. And Jack and Daxter, El Legato de la Precursors. I somehow managed to find a Spanish copy in a British charity shop, don't ask me how. And the back is in Glorious Comic Sans. D Lost Creators D Crash Bandicoot. Hmm. I wonder if that's supposed to be a selling point. But yeah, that's another game I keep meaning to play. Super Nintendo. Super Mario World. How can you not have Super Mario World? Star Wing. AKA Star Fox. Super Mario All Stars. Sim City. F Zero. Donkey Kong Country. The Lawn Mower Man. Oh man. I actually have talked. Um, I talked to the composer of the music in this game, Alistair Brimble, and he actually, I'm not kidding you, he actually gave me permission to use the music from the game in some of my reviews some time ago. And I found out that he also did some music for Rally Coaster Tycoon 2, I believe. Such a weird connection, not a very good game, creepiest fucking box art of all time. Goof Troop, I only know that game because of Game Grumps, you know, back when Game Grumps was good. And Mario Paint. How can you not have Mario Paint? I do have the mouse tucked away somewhere and it does work. Um, this, the music it uses when you save a picture is the same music they use in Super Mario Maker in one of the menus, I believe. A little bit of trivia. And a Super Game Boy. It's still probably better to use, this, to use the Game Boy player for the, for the GameCube, but this is a nice little alternative. There was a second one, but I don't think it was released in Europe in any official capacity. And Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, and Super Mario Kart. Back up you go. Both in terrible condition, those boxes. They're so bad that I would consider them boxless. God, I've got to put this shit back now. Nicely, Nintendo put spines on the NES games. But right off the bat... Oh. Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, because back in the day, in the UK, they weren't allowed to use the word ninja, I believe. I think it was censored. So they changed it to hero, which is the most pathetic bit of censorship I've ever heard of. It might even be a little bit racist, in, if you ask me, but yeah, ridiculous. But if you look at the rest of them, you know, Super Mario Bros. 2, Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario Bros., DuckTales. I was going to go woo, but I didn't. And my only two box NES games, Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers, and Marble Madness. I used to have the Mega Drive version of Marble Madness, but... It has the worst music of all time, it's so awful. Like, I know the Mega Drive has sort of more limited potential when it comes to making music, but even that, that is bad. And it's got the Indiana Jones font on it, I just realised. From the arcade classic. And we get to the bottom shelf, which is just odds and ends, like this is a few box Game Boy Advance games. Most notable one is probably like Ribbon Tengoku, and Warrior World Twisted, fucking love that game. Oh yeah, a lot of people don't know this. Choo Choo Rocket got ported to the Game Boy Advance. That, that's all I've got to say. 90% from Game Master, good for you. And, oh yeah, I, d I forgot I have a box copy of um, the original WarioWare. WarioWare Inc. Mini Game Minia. Mega Mini Zhu. Good for you. Would it be Joe? I don't know. And Kuru Kuru Kurin. Some poor sod paid £28.97 from Azta back in the day, but I only pay £2. Because I'm fucking skin flint. Very, very, oh, very, very small collection of Xbox games. I got, rather embarrassing, I've got two cop copies of Crash Bandicoot the Rather Cortex. And this is actually the only one of these game Xbox games I've played yet. I 100 percent it. And I feel like it's really embarrassing. But this is the best the best version to play. PS2 version is the second best version. Because the GameCube version has horrible frame rate issues. It, it will constantly dip from like 60 to 30. I don't know why it's that bad. When I did my Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot without Cortex, I had to do the PS2 version. And right at the bottom, we've got the absolutely minuscule 3DS and DDS... DDS? DS collection. I'm going to pick this up. Hope to God I don't drop this. Oh, oh no, don't drop it, these valuable fucking games. No, they're not. You may notice I've got two copies of Riven Paradise Mega Mix, the Japanese and the European. Back when the game came out, I had this horrible feeling that it wasn't going to get released outside of Japan. So I imported a Japanese copy and then used the homebrew stuff on my 3DS to get it working. 
And then the 3DS got patched, so I couldn't use it anymore. And then the European version came out, so I had to just buy it again. I can't even sell this. Nobody's going to buy this. This is literally a fucking waste of time. But yeah, this is it. Free 3DS games. Why you wear gold? It's a good game. Guitar Hero on tour. I bought this because it's such a weird novelty. They actually went to the effort of making like a special controller for the DS. You like plug this into the Game Boy Advance slot. Um, my copy of Ribbon Paradise has got like a cardboard sleeve on it. I don't know why. Why you wear DIY, which is probably the game I've spent the most time on because I love that game. Pokemon Diamond, Legend of Zelda, one of the few Zelda games I owned and actually like. Why you master disguise, another painfully mediocre game, and why you were touched. A game that I don't think is particularly aged well, because I feel like it's a game that was kind of going through the motions a little bit. And this mystery clear case is one of the Pokemon games. I forgot which one, I think it's like... Black, potentially. Let's find out. Ooh. I'm going to do it this. Oh, it's fucking upside down, forget. Right, and this little corner is just a bunch of random crap. There is a box copy of Beat Mania for the PS1. That's a Game Boy Camera, that's just a Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Printer, Sega Saturn Arcade Racer, and in this little box, which I will put on the shelf, give me a sec, Oh, it's just loose cartridges and stuff, oh this is awkward, but yeah just random like cartridges and shit, um, nothing particularly noteworthy for the most part in here, and um, where is it, where is it? I happen to have SNK Arcade Classics Volume 1 on the PSP as well. <laughs> this is just a coincidence, I didn't go out of my way to buy this. I bought a PSP with a bunch of stuff and just happened to come with it. And I've also got Virtual Tennis 3, so I've got Virtual Tennis 1, 2 and 3 on the Dreamcast, PS2 and PSP respectively. Just weird coincidences again. And here's Warrior Land 3. Best game in the series by a mile. Recommend it. And here's my copy of Pokemon Red, which is the first game I ever owned alongside, um, Drop Zone, wherever that fucking thing is. Oops. Oh yeah, and a lot of people don't know this, Super Monkey Ball Jr., they actually, the Mad Men went to the effort of porting Super Monkey Ball to the Game Boy Advance, and it actually works quite well. Obviously it's got much simpler visuals and it's stuck with like a digital controller, but it works, surprisingly. Flop, flop, flop. And that's it really, that's the entire collection, oh hey Crash, um, that's the entire collection for the most part, quite a lot of stuff, quite a lot of stuff to still play, I stopped buying a lot of games because to be honest I just got so much crap to get through, um, I was tempted to buy like a new game today funnily enough, they had a copy of Bugs Bunny's birthday blur out for the NES and yeah I caved and I bought it, don't you judge me. I think I only know about that game because of the AVGN, but from what I've seen it's not that bad of a game to be honest, and it was only like £6, that, like £6 for like a European NES game isn't that bad, it's quite good, you can go back now, but yeah that's the entire collection for the most part. I hope I've painted a good picture of my collection, and I hope it hasn't caused you any twin sanity. <laughs> so I don't know how to end the video to be honest, I'm just kind of stumped a little bit. This, is get, this video was a good idea on paper, but it's turned into oh my oh it's turned into pandemonium. Tennis. But yeah, I mean, uh, to the one person that ended up watching this, I hope you enjoyed this because I fucking didn't enjoy making this in the slightest. Hopefully, it wasn't any trouble. Oh. oh.